Well, hi there, everybody. It's Captain Mike, and uh, we're uh, getting ready to take a little ride here. We had uh, some visitors that I didn't really want. I don't know if they're still here, but most people call them poachers. And that's pretty much what they are. So I'm going to spin this around. This is a little bit different camera, so it might not jump as much while we're driving. But we're hoping. All right, so here we go. pile there it's only about half the size as it was earlier today yeah that zoom works too damn fast you see a tractor going out they're taking the bales out to another spot on the farm where a semi truck can get to them and we've already let's see we've already had one semi truck of them uh, load out of here already today but I'm looking for poachers so I need to turn around and get get to it anybody's in there or not. Definitely somebody put up a little shed. I'm hoping it's somebody that we gave permission to be here and not somebody else. So I think what I'm gonna do is turn this off a minute and make a phone call. Well, we got a part way figured out. Uh, the hunting shack that you just saw in the last shot that was actually put up by a neighbor her husband now the neighbor she has been shooting deer here since she was about 12 years old her first time out as a junior hunter she got I don't know 10, 
10 pointer. Then the very next year she followed up with an 8. So she did quite well. Anyhow, we're going to go up on the hillside and I want to look down and see if I see any red clothing or anybody else out there that might be dressed like me. When I go out poacher hunting, I don't wear. Okay, I see somebody's got a vehicle here. Let's just sweep around and have a look. going to be the neighbor girl, the one that started hunting here as a 12 year old. <laughs> she does good every year, that one. I don't hunt. If I was hungry, I would. But, uh, deer standing by that blind there for a minute. It's not, it was just the way the shadow was. Okay. different camera I'm using today. It has a strange lens in it. I actually bought it a couple of years ago for doing videos, but then uh, I thought I ruined it. And it may be ruined, but I'll just have to... Uh, I, I won't know until we really look at the video that comes out. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I don't see any heads in there or anybody moving. Alright, we're going to quit here for a second. Okay, well, I'm rolling along again. southeastern end here. Team is bouncing, we hope.
empty, but I can't see it shaking that much in the viewfinder. Which isn't so bad. You can see right there somebody has a deer stand. some quiet. Not seeing any deer, but uh, it's kind of chilly, and uh, I hear the call of nature calling me, so I'm going to put this on pause for a minute. Oh, I hear something. I hear something that's like dogs or something. That's one dog. There's one with a much higher voice that I was hearing. There. This is that swampy area I told you guys about. Now, if you look at that, down here, it actually got cold enough to form ice. How about that? about that. do this without getting wet feet. Oh shit. Slid right into it. <laughs> seems to appear and disappear as it wants to. Oh. 
Yeah, that's an odd looking tree, isn't it? That thing looks like it just waiting for somebody to hang from it. It's tall too. It's about, it's pretty close to 20 feet where that top crook of it is. I should come out here sometime with the chainsaw and lay down a couple little bridges that are big enough for a four-wheeler to get over. Now a four-wheeler possibly could make it through that, but it's pretty much a slippery mud. And if you get stuck, you are stuck. And to get unstuck, you're going to be a pile of mud and wetness. I'd much rather build a nice little log bridge and ride over it. Not really seeing much in the way of uh, prints, tracks there. Kind of making me think that the deer are uh, moving along here a little bit further up than where we're at right now. And when we get to this side, over and through here, I can guarantee there's deer there. There's little nooks and crannies they hide in. And then if they think you're getting too close to them, they either hunker down and don't move at all, or they jump and run. But I'm not looking to disturb them. If they found a spot that's quiet and away from getting shot at, I don't want to flush them up for a hunter. And I'm not anti-hunting. I mean, I got all this ground here. And I let people that help us on the farm hunt here. And that's gotten to be a bit of a pain in the ass. Because I don't know where they are most of the time. And I would think the common courtesy would be that they would text me in the morning and say they're going to be coming out. We'll be at the southeast section, the northeast, or, you know, wherever they're going to be then I can still go out and use my farm without scaring the deer away. And after all, I am the son of a bitch that bought it and paid the taxes on it. And it's kind of the livelihood of this place <sighs> that those deer are eating. Which I don't mind a bit because I like seeing them, and if they eat a little bit of my hay fields or anything else, that's, I think that's a pretty cheap price to have to pay for that view. See the white beast either. Where well, are you all gonna be surprised? I'll put some pictures up of the white beast. I'm just not ready to yet. But I was watching a I don't know one of them not finding Bigfoot shows or not finding whatever shows the other night last night. And uh guy had this really shitty, shitty picture. You couldn't even tell what it was. 
and all the Bigfoot experts and crypto experts were all jumping up and down about it. Oh, yeah, oh, look, oh, look. Well, when do you see the picture I got for you? Wait till you see that picture. And then the first time somebody says, oh, it's fake, or, oh, that's just something, stuff sitting there. Then I'll bring out the other one to show its head turns and he shifts his weight and all that other shit. But I'd like to be out pretty close to catching him by that point. I'm a little bit afraid of putting the footage out. Because I don't know what kind of metadata is on it, on the digital. And if somebody were able to figure that out, where he's at, they might go out and shoot him or something. I don't want to shoot anything that might possibly turn out to be something you could tame down a little bit and, and get along with. But I'm sure you'll hear this kind of diatribe a lot before we catch a little bastard. A little bastard. <laughs> that damn thing bigger than the biggest black bear I ever saw. Hello. Huh. Let me see if I can get this in focus. Looks like a little pile of turd, but it's actually a track. I think what you're looking at is the inner pads, the inner pad of it. Probably not going to show up very well until it's on the screen. It's about that big around. So it was a, you know, it to me of a dog like track for some reason. Could be cat like. Pretty good size, though. Well, let's get across this. No wet crops. Uh, one of the things I hate. Getting wet feet. And then wet socks. And a little bit of mud here. Let me take a look. Yeah, I'm not for any footprints or footprints or I don't really see any. Okay. And then this. These little bastards right here. I call it multiflora rose. It's a non-native species. And the story I've been told about it. This is that uh, Pennsylvania Game Commission. I don't know, maybe in the 50s or 60s. Thought, gee, if there was more ground cover on these areas for rabbits and pheasants to hide in, we'd have more rabbits and pheasants for people to shoot. Well, they apparently had Boy Scouts and other conservation people planting these things and they grew up into stuff like this. You really can hardly get through there without getting torn up, that whole little area. So I, have, <laughs> I see pheasants once in a while, but they're nowhere near the number that you would need for it to be a hunting species. Now when I was a teenager and did a lot of hunting, I uh, used to love pheasant. They were really, really good eating. They're all dark meat. And they were good. 
I always did better shooting them with a 22 rifle than I did with a 12 gauge. Okay, well, we're back to the jalopy. And I think uh, we'll call this video quits for the day. Let me turn this around and look in a minute. Ah, there we go. I kind of like this camera better than the other one. Hey, folks. Subscribe to this channel, will you? Uh, you're going to see a whole lot of videos like this. And if you're locked up in quarantine, which it looks like we're all going to be locked up again for a while, yeah, it might be something to do. I mean, tune on the channel and watch for the new video. Maybe there'll be something funny. I don't know. Uh, I do have some ideas coming up for stuff to do. And hopefully you'll enjoy it. But uh, subscribe, because... The sooner I can get enough subscribers, then I can set this thing up so that it works live out here. And uh, we can just go out on, you know, real-time tours. All right. Take care, everybody. Good luck. Good night. Stay safe. Don't get COVID. My neighbor, well, here's a COVID story. My neighbor to the next border behind me, they were doing well, staying away from folks. And when they did go out, they'd put on a mask and all that. And uh, at some point in time, somebody dropped their guard. And there's a lot to the story with them. They visited somebody and they dragged it home. Now grandma's in the hospital uh, I'm just going to say touch and go. Uh, dad's living in the barn so that he doesn't get anybody else infected. And the other kids are, they did, it didn't hit them as hard. So, I mean, staying safe isn't just to stay safe for yourself. You have to do that for your family and your friends too. So... If you're not out on a place like this, or you're going to be around other people, wear a mask. Don't drag anything home. All right, take care, everybody. This is uh, Captain Mike with Pirates on the Farm. And I guess we're going to be closing in on Christmas soon. Yeehaw. Bye-bye.